All right, so we've got that second part created here with the insert. As you can see, it's got a, a black appearance to it. And what I want to do is get another one in there that has a different appearance that's white, obviously, so we can make a pattern for these. So what I'm going to do is come up here to open, and you'll see that I've got one of each here, an insert white and just the typical insert. So I'm going to open up insert white, and as you can see, it's got a, a different appearance. So I just, all I did was I opened this up, I resaved it with a different appearance. So I'll close that down for now, come back to this interface here, and in the assemble tab, I'm going to place uh, another insert here. Okay, so let's take a look at that. So place, we'll come to insert white, and click on open, and I'm just going to put one of these in there and say okay. Now obviously that's not in the orientation that I want it to be in. If I change this around, you can see that that's not quite right. So simple enough, we'll take a look at some constraints here. I'm going to come up to this constraints button in the assembly tab, and I know that I've got some edges that I want to be flush, so why don't I just click on this face and this this face here. Oof, that was a loud pop. Um, anyway, kind of threw me off. We'll take that out for the video edit. So as you can see that it's um, placed these flush to one another, but I also want another constraint flush for uh, this face. Oh, we'll say apply. Sorry. So I want another one on this face to this face. I'll apply that. And then we'll want one of these to one of these edges shared. So as you can see, I'm just pulling these apart by dragging them. And what it's doing is it's taking the rook off of that uh, center point, but that's okay. It's still it's still somewhat constrained. So that last constraint that we wanted was an opposed face. We'll go from this one to this one, puts them together, and now those are are good. They're fully constrained. I believe they are. Yeah, they don't move without the other. So. As you can see, the rook, I can move this around. If I want to plant that onto that black piece, what I can do is use the constraints from the origin of the rook to match with this piece right here. So this is neat. This is very handy. Take a look at this. We'll expand the rook, and we'll expand its origin. And now we can see the planes that we use to create it. So what I want to do is find the associated planes for this piece as well and use those to align it. Um, what I could do as well is I know this plane here and this plane should be par parallel so I'll say constrain and we'll put in uh, just a, a typical make constraint for this plane here and this this one will do. So now you can see that those are um, they're collinear, coplanar. I want to back that off 0.75. Oh, and I want it to go in the opposite direction. So now I know that I've centered it. I've got to do that with this perpendicular plane as well. So we'll do that. That'll be this one and this one. And again, I'm just going to put in a minus 0.75. Okay, and now if I grab that rook, it'll move everything because everything is fully constrained in here. Okay, so that's just a, a quick look at constraints. Now the other thing is to, I want my white insert to be offset just a, a sixteenth of an inch. So if I come over here to insert one, or no, this one here. I want to hover over my different constraints to see which which one I want to use. So it's this one here, mate. And if I come over to my sketch, I've got this dimension of one sixteenth of an inch between these. We're going to put inserts in between each insert. Okay, so we'll come back to Inventor, and I'll just put in point. 
one, two, five. Okay, so that's that's what I want. That's what I'm going to need for the layout of this pattern. Um, I could place these another way, like using uh, a plane from here to here, and then mirroring that. Uh, that might be a good idea. Um, but uh, we'll take a look at how to lay out this pattern in the next segment.